Hello, people of the internet, and welcome to the painting portal. I am Emma Stroll, your host, <laughs> and um, I like to make trippy art, pretty much. I, um, I paint, I draw, I use markers, I do it all, so if you're interested in that, like, subscribe. Also, um, I am working on an Alice in Wonderland themed project that I'm hoping to um, have made into a book that you guys can follow along with and get invested in. And um, if you want to see all of the pieces that I've done in this series so far, um, you can look at my Instagram page, which is painting.portal. Um, I also post on DeviantArt and Pinterest. Um, with the same username that I have here. So, yeah. Um, additionally, I do have an Etsy shop if you guys would like to purchase any um, original artwork that I come out with. I'm gonna be, um, you know, updating that as much as possible. And yeah, so if you like to support small artists and you like artwork, head over there. There will be a link in the description. And um, yeah, so aside from that, let's uh, get into the piece for this week, which is the Bandersnatch themed piece. I am really excited to show this to you guys, and I really hope you like it, so. Alright, so jumping right into my first YouTube video ever. I'm so excited. Oh my god. So, I thought I'd go through some things that I thought were successful with this piece, some things that I thought weren't and um, also how I personally interpreted this piece and like the symbols that I put into it and just some main ideas that I have about this piece. Okay, so we'll start with the hair. I really loved the fur that I did on this creature personally. Um, I feel like it was one of the things in this piece that really like pulled it together and just made it look the way that I wanted to. Um, when sketching this design out, it's something that I really struggled with just because, uh, I don't know, it was doing the patterns seemed really difficult with um, the different poses that I was trying and I was trying all different types of patterns but I feel like the checkers just really suited this the best and it really um, ties in with the other pieces much better. So, yeah. I also feel like I should say that um, I really like to start with um, putting the blacks in the piece just because I feel like getting your darkest values in first allows you to select your other colors around that if you don't have um, an exact plan because doing colors was something that I really struggled with in this piece. Let me know what you guys think about the color selection that I chose. Um, you'll see in a couple minutes the the clothing. I <laughs> it was one thing that I really struggled with. Um, also, as a side note, my markers were dying, so I didn't have my normal color selection that I would get to. So that kind of sucked. I have to hit the store again. I just bought a bunch of new markers, but I didn't buy the right colors. So I'm gonna have to give that another whirl. <laughs> But, yeah, I feel like putting the texture in this fur is just really satisfying to watch. I don't know why. But it was fun to draw, too, because once I had my sketch done, it was really just a matter of filling in those dark areas. Um, I did have to add some extra lines and stuff to kind of um, compensate for where my sketch rubbed off when I transferred the image onto the the marker paper but yeah I think overall the fur in this piece just came out really nice additionally while I was doing this um just like as a side note for the pattern if you're trying to do something similar I um I just made sure to make all of the black parts of the um pattern separate from the white parts even if there were two um, pieces of black hair that were supposed to be next to each other, like on the ear and the jaw, or on the hooves too. Um, 
the hooves I think I could have done a little bit better, but I honestly don't have a lot of experience drawing animals, so I think doing this um, was a big challenge in and of itself, but I wish I did push myself a little bit harder on those hooves. But um, yeah, and I really just did my best to make all of the hairs look super like wispy and floaty um, with the, the felt tip end of my marker. And here I'm just going in and doing all of the, um, like, layers of the tree. I don't really know what that's called, but, yeah, that's what I'm doing here. So, you know. Alright, and here I'm just going into the background now. I have chosen my background colors very specifically, um, both because they match the other ground colors that I've used in other pieces. Again, if you want to look at those, they are on my Instagram, my DeviantArt, and my Pinterest, <laughs> so look around. But um, I chose these specific warm colors um, to such a drastic degree in this piece because I wanted it to almost feel like fiery. I don't know if that makes sense, but I wanted it to feel like very destructive, a little bit like chaotic, and when there's a lot of bright colors, especially on like a background element like the ground, um, it can make things look very like, I don't know, um, jumbled, you know, and disorganized, like chaotic. And here's where my orange marker ran out. <laughs> but um, I do wish that I had spaced the stripes farther apart and had just gone red all the way to the back of that ground piece there just because, um, I mean, if my markers weren't dying, that's what I would have done. But just because um, I think it would have really set that mood a little bit more of, like, destruction and fire. <laughs> but um, I chose doing purple as the last segment of this background piece, which you'll see in a minute, um, just because I... Felt like it's it's a warm color, you know, so it's still gonna tie in with the red, but it is um, still cool as well. So um, it's just gonna really push that background farther back. So being that I had limited options, I feel like that was the best choice to make, which you know is all I could really do at the time. So I wish I had also been a little bit neater around his face. I was such a slob and I, um, like, I put, like, a purple stripe on and it totally ruined, like, that left-hand side of his face. Well, I guess I shouldn't say that it ruined it, but it, I don't know, it made it a lot less of a, um, clean shape, you know? But, um, here I'm just going in with the trees. I'm actually letting the markers breathe a little bit. I'm trying not to layer them on too thick just so that I got a little bit of that um, texture so that you could see the streaks. I think it makes it look a little bit more like bark and um, you'll see in a minute here that I go in and I layer again darker on um, on the bottom or on the top layer I mean I'm sorry. And then I also added some extra stumps to that back line just so that um, it would give a little bit more of an interesting silhouette. Um, if you've seen some of my other pieces, you'll see that normally I do like a green kind of like slimy goo <laughs> looking thing. Um, that's like an abstraction of a tree line and I kind of did that here but they were all cut down and it makes it a little sad. Also, I apologize for my camera quality at this moment of the video because it really mushed that purple into the blue and um, you'll see that when I change clips, it, it really highlights the streakiness in that green that I put down in the background, um, but I did put another layer over that just because I saw the video and it, it bothered me, so um, in a couple minutes you'll see that change, but here I'm just going into the plants. I decided to actually shade, um, those, like, leafier plants, not, like, the ones that don't have flowers on them, with the blue instead of, um, the darker green, just because I felt like it would add some variation and, um, cool down this very front of the page a little bit, um, 
with with what <laughs> few life forms were still remaining i really wanted there to be a contrast between the earth and the things growing out of it so i think that that was probably a good decision and i really like the way that those colors blended together the blue and that light green just look really nice um and here i'm just going in and coloring in the flowers um i chose purple and black just because I felt like there were not enough dark elements in this piece. So I um, decided to choose a little bit of a darker, still cool colored um, flower for those. But yeah, this is where you'll see that I am uh, just shading those stumps and the uh, chopped down trees with with that darker brown just to add some dimension because I feel like there are not many earthy tones, but they still laid kind of flat on the paper, so I just wanted to liven them up a little bit. And um, I did the um, rings in the tree to match the colors that I used in um, my, my white rabbit piece when Alice first follows the rabbit down the hole. Um, so, I mean, if you want to see that, that's also on my Instagram, but... Uh, yeah, so I, I just kind of mimic the colors there. Um, I, I do that a lot throughout these pieces, you'll notice. Um, just adding some more blue pops. I liked all these little blue details that I put in. They really make, um, make it stand out, I feel like, from all that red that is in the very center of the piece. Especially being that I chose to do his, um, his head pink. And I, I wanted to cool it down with his skin a little bit, which is why I chose that more, like, purpley magenta pink color. And then I shaded it with the violet purple. Um, I feel like that was probably a good choice. And I, I balanced it out with the saddle because I didn't want his arms to kind of just be, like, poking out cold tone. So I, um... I did that, and I really actually like watching the shading on that color specifically just because the contrast that it has with the purple is so nice, but it blends really well too. Like, it's just, it's just the perfect balance between dark and light from that purple that it just really cuts in there nice when you do your shadows, and I noticed that when doing the handle on the saddle the most. Just adding some dimension in the skin. I also added some dimension in um, in those blue details. I also put in um, that pink, like in the separation of his <laughs> his torso. I don't know if that sounds gruesome, but I put the pink in there just because I wanted it to almost mirror his head. Um, and now that I'm looking at this, I wish I had. I had more ink in that red marker before it died because I left a, a little bit of a blotch between the background and his face. I don't know if it's too noticeable, but... And for what the pants were, I feel like they were done well. I think I shaded them to the best of my ability. I used that purple to shade them so that they weren't so, um, like, separate from everything else. But then I used the green on the armor, and I feel like... I should have either done green pants and green armor, or red armor and red pants. I feel like the green was a good choice because it really gave him some contrast from that red, but I think using those complementary colors in an outfit is just kind of odd. I don't know. Um, it's, it's still feasible. He could still wear it. I don't- I won't judge him for doing that, I guess. <laughs> And I also wish that I had been a little bit more careful when going through the swords because they look a little wonky, I don't know. Alright guys, this is the end of the video. Thank you all so much for being here and watching my very first YouTube video. It really means a lot to me, um, you know, and if you want to see any of my other work, um, follow me on Instagram, I have a Pinterest, and I also have a DeviantArt um, all with the names Painting Portal. Um, Instagram is painting.portal. So thank you guys so much. Have a good day.